The, the, uh, the people who hung on from the original founding meeting, people like Joe and Joe Rosenthal, uh, they put money, uh, a lot of money. They were, he was a, a well-to-do lawyer. They put lots of money into ACLU Delaware, but they also put lots of time into the organization. Well, I came to Wilmington in 1953. I left uh, Chicago without having completed the degree because um, having left Michigan, um, the University of Michigan, understandably, did not inform the selective service system that I was still a student. Um, I, I had visited DuPont as a candidate for employment. Um, so they knew, to, they were informed about my changed draft status. And they said, um, well, we think we can get you out of the draft problem but only if you're here and on our rolls as an employee. So I, I came, uh, the terror <laughs> was a, a horrible business. My car broke down, it was a jalopy on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. I got here uh, and started to work. Um, and it soon became evident that DuPont was not going to be able to get me out of the draft. And so I stopped working on my DuPont assigned project and worked only on the completion of my PhD. And um, I finished the work and uh, headed back to uh, Ann Arbor to do the oral uh, in January of 54. Uh, and I drove 15 hours through a snowstorm uh, and finished the exam uh, and then came back to Wilmington to report for induction in the army. Uh, but in the few months that I had been here in the summer of 53, uh, although I, I don't know, I must have had my, should have had my head examined, uh, I was working 18, 20 hours a day, really, literally, to try to beat the draft, and get my thesis done. One of my, the people I was in a carpool with said, there's going to be a meeting tonight of the Stevenson Club. This was a group that had come together to promote the candidacy of Adlai Stevenson in the 1952 election. And uh, I said, yeah, I can go, I'll do that. So I went to that meeting and among the six or eight people there was Sonia. Uh, and I, it was only years later that I learned that she went home and said to her parents, I met somebody Tonight, I could really like. She pursued me. Uh, I was on the rebound from another blah, 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 old story right. for 25, 26 year old people. Um, but we had so much in common. Uh, we were made for each other. Uh, anyway, uh, she was in, she was indefatigable. Uh, she had a degree in microbiology, master's degree, and we both worked at the Dupont Experimental Station, but in the same department. But we met at that political meeting of the Stevenson Club. It gave up the name Stevenson Club and became the Young Democrats of Northern Newcastle County. 
Uh, and just a, a side note, when we she joined DuPont in 52, I in 53, there were 2,500 people at the DuPont Experimental Station of whom not one was black. This is four miles from the city of Wilmington with 70% plus or minus black. And so we agitated within the limits of keeping retaining our jobs that this was a crazy situation. And it's beyond belief. DuPont's position at the time was, uh, well, we're a uh, national and international company and we conform to local practice. So if we run a facility in, in the, the Texas Gulf Coast, it's segregated. If we run a facility in Buffalo, New York, it's integrated. Wilmington, Delaware was definitely segregated. And I remember vividly that in my first weeks on the job, uh, we had a, a lecture by a visiting scientist who was Indian and very dark skinned Indian. And uh, my manager thought it prudent to call the Hotel DuPont uh, to be sure that there'd be, that, that yeah, well, he knew that this person would not be seated for dinner at the green room without some special intervention. Can you imagine? So that, that was the environment in which we, Sonia and I, entered the political scene in Delaware. So it started out uh, when we were very junior employees with simply saying to our managers, you know, this is really insane. Uh, but then it, it became more over it and we picketed the restaurants um, across the street from the DuPont building. Um, the number of us were arrested. I was not among those, but that, that's what happened. We met Joe Biden. This is off ACNU topic, but not completely so. We met Joe Biden. Um, when did we meet him? In oh, in uh, nineteen seventy-one. Joe was employed by a gentleman named Sid Balick, whose son Adam Balick is still practicing law. In Delaware, and Sid invited us, Sonia and me. Uh, we had been married four or five years, I guess, to his home to meet Joe Biden, whom he had just hired as a junior lawyer in his firm. And uh, I remember that uh, one of the things I, I always asked candidates in those days was. Tell me the last book you've read. And most political candidates couldn't remember because it was years ago when they had read a book. Joe remembered and recited chapter and verse, the last book he had read. And jumping ahead in the story, when we became friendly personally with Joe and got to see his personal library, I saw the hundreds of books on politics, history, philosophy. And the most interesting thing was that all those books were filled with paper clips, post-it notes, uh, dog-eared pages that he wanted to remember for future reference. We got to know him quite well. And in particular, in the 1970 election, I guess it was, yeah, uh, the Democratic Party got swamped. And the high, we, we lost everything. Joe Biden was the highest office we took. He was elected to the Newcastle County Council. And um, the then head of the, um, the, the Democratic Party put together what was called a renewal commission to try to figure out why we did so badly. And the head of the Renewal Commission was um, 
Carvel, Albert Carvel. That's a whole nother story. Albert Carvel was a great man. Uh, Carvel was a chair. Um, Joe Biden was a, a member of the committee because he won, he won an election, which was a big deal. Uh, a woman by the name of Norma Handloff, who was the mayor of Newark, was on the committee. Anyhow, they went up and down Delaware, Joe Biden flashing his toothy grin and making friends with every everybody who would admit to being a Democrat. Uh, and it was right at that time, Joe called Sonia, who had become a good friend in the course of the uh, Renewal Commission's work. And he said, uh, introductory chit chat, then Sonia, I'm thinking of running for the Senate. And she said, uh, you mean the state Senate, right? And he said, no, the United States Senate. And her response was, Joe, you're crazy. And he said, I may be crazy, but will you help? And she said, yeah, of course. A day or two later, she had a phone call from uh, somebody uh, affiliated with an organization called the Council for a Livable World, which was headquartered in Washington. And it was primarily a, uh, a, a bunch of physicists uh, devoted to weapons arms control. And the, and the guy from the council said to Sonia, we've had a request for money from a guy named Joe Biden. Do you know him? And she said, yeah, I know him very well. Should we give him money? And she said, well, let me explain politics to you. Um, you can buy a Senate seat in Delaware for a lot less than in New York or California, and you get the same one vote. And the guy said to her, we never thought of that. They were not politically attuned. She said, well, do think about it. They gave Joe $25,000, which hard to believe in these days of multi-multi-million dollar campaigns was about a quarter of his total Senate campaign. We, and again, more particularly Sonia, uh, more than I, because now, I continued to work full time for DuPont. She dropped out. Well, she left DuPont after seven, eight, nine years because she wanted to work part time, but that was unheard of in those days. So she quit and did other things. She's never idle for a minute. Uh, but we were involved in all the Biden campaigns. Uh, and uh, she didn't hesitate to uh, to go to the mat with Joe. I remember once she came back from a session in D.C. where she had gone with some people from Planned Parenthood to urge him to vote against the Hyde Amendment. Joe said to her, Sonia, uh, I, I, I know where you're coming from and I sympathize, but I can't ask people to pay their tax money to support something they don't believe in. And she said to him, Joe, that's a bullshit argument. I'm being made to pay taxes for a war that I don't believe in. We sued the state, we ACLU Delaware sued the state uh, to correct the conditions, the inhuman conditions at Ferris School. And Judy uh, was so skillful and so diplomatic that when the state authorities found that they were not able to meet a deadline for some event or action, they phoned, they telephoned Judy, in effect, to ask her permission and explain their failure. She was absolutely heroic and indomitable. 